Welcome to Sparks of Love. My name is Jerry Lynn Sparks, and today we have um, our guest in studio uh, is Brian Hanks from The Brian Hanks Show. Welcome, Brian. Hello, Jerry Lynn. It's so good to see you. I have to tell everybody that I have known Brian Hanks since he was five years old, and we were in uh, Trap Hill Elementary School in Trap Hill, North Carolina, at the northwestern corner um, at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And um, Brian and I have stayed in contact pretty much our whole lives. And um, Brian, uh, after high school, took off and went to the Army, and I ta- took off and went to California. So um, we've not landed in the same town, but we always land in each other's lives. Um, so I like to think of it. So, Brian, um, from my perspective, here's how I w- would describe you, and I'll let you do your bio after me. Um, Brian is kind of um, the face of Kinston, North Carolina. I don't know why he's not mayor, uh, but he has um, done a radio show, which you see behind him. They just recorded their 1,000th episode uh, oh, wow. on his birthday, which was just a couple of days ago, and I was honored to speak with him. He also got inducted into, I think it was the, was it the Kinston Hall of Fame, the Sports Hall of Fame? Uh, in Goldsboro, which is a city just a little, a little bit away from here, the yeah. George Whitfield Baseball Hall of Fame. Yes, I'm very honored to be one of his inductees. Actually, on Friday on my birthday, also. Yeah, that was wow. awesome. I know. I got to call him, and he was like so excited. So I want to see some pictures from that if you have them. Um, and then also, in addition to running the radio show, he's also the public information officer for is it Kinston, North Carolina? As for Lenore County, uh, Kenston is the county seat of Lenore County, but for Lenore County, North Carolina, yes. Yeah. So he has a lot of media experience, as you can tell. This is um, a real Forrest Gump situation. Are you related to Tom Hanks, sir? <laughs> oh, I wish. I would be uh, I would be uh, taking Jerry Lynn to Disney World or something if I was. Oh, okay. that would be f- You'd be voicing the, the, the Woody toys like his brother. <laughs> Ironically, Toy Story, my favorite Disney movie. So, so, oh, yeah. really? yeah. That is a good one. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Uh, and with Brian today, he has Molly Dog. So this is the most wonderful dog in the world. And Brian allowed me to go jogging with her around Kinston a couple of years ago. Um, so I don't know if she's going to make an appearance or not, but we can show the what, world. This I will move my camera here. Yeah, so just move the camera for a second her. to see Molly Dog. Hey, you Molly see? Dog. Talk about love. Like, I love this dog. She is all love all the time. And whenever I was down there, where she is right there is where she was with me. Like, she just followed me around. And Brian said she kind of got all mopey after I left, which you know, just really touched me. So and she's 14 years old now, right? Well, she will be in March, yes. If, in uh, March. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, um, so Brian, from your perspective, I would like to hear for the audience what you do, because you do so much. And I just want to make sure we level set before we dive into it today. No, that's fine. Uh, I've been very blessed uh, as you thank you for the kind words there and for the kind uh, biography. But uh, I got involved after leaving the army. I got involved with uh, being a sports freelancer or as we call it as a stringer in Gastonia, North Carolina, which is close to Charlotte. I did that from uh, 91 to 99. I ended up working and writing for about 30 different publications and websites in that time. Uh, All sports. Uh, Just had a really good time doing that. Uh, Covered high school sports, college sports, uh, the Carolina Panthers, the Charlotte Hornets during that time. Uh, a lot of, co- like I said, a lot of college athletics too. I uh, was a member of the ACC Sports Writers Association, mm. and I had a really good time with that. But it was mostly a freelance type situation, and I thought I would like to have my own newspaper, you know, my own sports section. So I started working for the Lincoln Times News in Lincolnton. I went from there to uh, the Gaston Gazette in Gastonia, the Shelby Star in Shelby, North Carolina, and then. Mm. I uh, came to Kinston in uh, 2002, and I've been here ever since. I came here to Kinston to be uh, the uh, – I was only going to be here for a couple of years, and I was going to be the next great ACC uh, basketball writer. Ended up falling in love with Kinston. The folks here, it's just an amazing town, a town of about 20,000 people in eastern North Carolina. I was a sports editor of the local newspaper here mm-hmm. for about six or seven years. They – begrudgingly moved me over to the news side and I uh, worked there from 2008 to 2016 as a sports or as the uh, editor 
I was a newspaper here. It was the Kensington uh, Free Press, right? Newspapers, as you guys know, I don't know how it is up in New York, but I can tell you uh, here in eastern North Carolina and in the south, newspapers have really lost a lot of circulation on that. So I left the newspaper in 2016. Kind of had to newspaper? find my way uh, professionally <laughs> a little bit, but I started with, new, with uh, the radio station here in 2019. And as Jerry so graciously mentioned, we uh, had our 1,000th episode this past Friday or on Friday, January the 12th. And uh, just it's been it's been a, a brand new thing, as Jerry can tell you, too. Uh, I, I just turned 55, but I didn't start in new in radio until I was uh, in my 50s. So this has been a brand new thing for me and trying to learn the ropes of it and how to be uh, a radio guy. And it's been a lot of fun. Uh, my show is, uh, <laughs> it's really cool. It's people ask me, is it a sports talk show? And we are, we, uh, we delve a lot into sports and all that, but it's, uh, I guess I'm going to be a little egotistical here, Jerry Lynn. <laughs> it's a Brian Hanks show. It's if I'm interested yeah. in it, That's I'm right. egotistical enough and megalomaniacal enough, I guess, to think, well, everybody else will like it too. And, uh, it, oh, it's a fun uh, show. He had me on as a guest that day that really? I was down there. Yeah. Yep. He had. Yeah, she uh, was uh, my, but my big interview that day when she came on. That's right. He has a section and, called uh, the big like interview. Like I said, just very blessed to be a part of that. Uh, we've won a couple of awards. The uh, the Lenore County Chamber of Commerce named our show the Small Business of the Year for 2023. Oh, well, and that's awesome. uh, it's just been it's been a really neat experience. Yeah, Evan had a question about newspapers. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> oh, what newspapers? <laughs> yeah, what are they? I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, newspapers. Oh, he's a he's a young pup. Yes, I can understand that. I can he's, appreciate that. He's all that. of twenty three years old. And, and by the way, I'm, you, a, I'm, I'm only thirty off years from fifty. Mm -hmm. But you know, you mentioned your age, so I'm going to strike that, Scott. We're going to note that timestamp that we're going to <laughs> strike that age thing. How dare you talk I, about our age? Everyone's getting. I don't understand why that's such a big thing. It Everybody is. gets old, like that's Sylvester exactly. Stallone. He's right. He's getting Botox. Stop it. Just yeah. enough. You look. Yeah. You look. You look gross. You look ridiculous. <laughs> Just age gracefully. I'm, and now I, he's on a reality show with his daughter. What I is happening that. with Sylvester Stallone? I don't know. <sighs> I saw that, but I just feel like he needs to do what he needs to do. I cannot slam the man that created Rocky. And one of our previous guests had said, if you look at the script for Rocky, the line on like the last eight pages of the script is Rocky opens fire. That's it. That's all it is on the, the script for the last eight pages. But opens fire, not Rocky. Oh, I'm thinking Rambo. I'm thinking Rambo. <laughs> I got my I got my Sylvester Stallone's mixed. <laughs> he did oh, both, and they're five letter yeah. R words: Rocky and Rambo. Wrote, but Rambo's based on a book, though, isn't it? I think it I is. First Blood was like that's an adaptation, but I, I think so. I don't know. I'm not sure. But Brian was also, uh, getting back to Brian, you were also the um, announcer for the Down East Wood Ducks. And so I went with him down there. Um, down, I keep calling them the Down Home Wood Ducks. But <laughs> That's such a great I know. Name. It is so much better. That's the Down a, Home Wood Ducks. Thing I do. know. I think I should be their marketing uh, person. But we had so much fun doing that. But it was really easy to see that Brian has taken a community, and really this is a show – the show that we're on here, Sparks of Love About Love, everything in your life is about the love of Kinston. And it seems that Kinston loves you back. So, I mean, you've got like a little story with Kinston, a little love story right there. Well, I've you know? been, you're right. I mean, I've been very, very blessed for that, Jerry Lynn, that, uh, you know, where we grew up in Wilkes County, I didn't have, you know, we won't delve into any of this, but I didn't have the, the greatest uh, growing up. You know, and I know you, uh, I'll let all your uh, viewers and all your listeners know. I mean, Jerry Lynn was the rock star at North Wilkes High School. Oh. Okay. I mean, everybody loved her. She was the best athlete, boys or girl. And that's not an exaggeration. She was by far the best athlete on either oh. side of, or either gender at North Wilkes and was just very popular. And everybody loved Jerry Lynn and they, as they still do now, well, I was, I mean, I was pretty well known, but nowhere near as popular as her. And obviously I wasn't the athlete that she was, although I could still take her to the hoop if I needed to. And well, now uh, we're going to have to prove that next time I'm home. <laughs> there you go. So, I love that. We will definitely do that. But, yeah. uh, it, when I went into the army and even when I was in Western North Carolina in Gastonia and Shelby and Charlotte and all that, uh, I had mentors who, uh, and I can even tell you Richard Walker in Gastonia, Chris Hobbs in Hickory, North Carolina, 
who were sort of, they were the guys. They were the uh, people who knew everything about sports in Hickory and in Gastonia, respectively. And I always wanted that for myself. I knew it wasn't going to happen in Gastonia. I knew it wasn't going to happen in Shelby where Al, uh, where uh, Alan Ford was. But when I got to Kinston, they had never had anybody like that uh, in their sports department. So I just, I, I, I learned everything I could about Kinston. I just delved into this community. Uh, I serve on about eight different boards. I have served on eight different boards through the years and just fell in love with it. The place loves me. I love Kinston. And uh, I will, God willing, I will spend the rest of my life here. Yeah, I think that you really grew into your place because from my perspective, um, you were always like the sweetest, most intelligent guy, like really sweet, really intelligent. Um, but you didn't really dive into the sorts of things I was diving into in school. The way you're living in Kinston is how I lived in high school. Like I just, I want to do this and I want to do that. From my perspective, I don't think you were seeking out as much as you are in Kinston. Is that an accurate assessment? Oh, that's very accurate. And bearing in mind, too, it was my home situation, uh, in which, yeah. again, if you want to dive more into, we can. But I uh, grew up in a very abusive uh, mm -hmm. uh, home uh, and uh, would have loved to have been able to have done more of that kind of stuff, but I just didn't really have the opportunities to. Yeah. But uh, but look at you, the I, strength that you found within to find it. You didn't give up on those things that you wanted. And no, thank Kinston. you. And, I, and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, I mean, it has to be said for my brother, too, who you adore, too. Yeah. Uh, my brother, yes, Daryl. Yes, I know the I jokes can come in my other brother, Daryl. But Daryl and uh, I are brother, like music aficionados. Daryl and I are music aficionados. If I start talking about music with Daryl, it could, the conversation's not ever going to end. Like we both love music. Well, Daryl is amazing, and for the <laughs> situations that both he and I came from, we're we're very blessed. He has worked very hard. I'm not a family man. I mean, he is a family guy. He's got three beautiful children. As uh, you know, we have we've not mentioned again. We I know we will uh, further on this. I just got uh, remarried on uh, December thirtieth. Yes. Uh, to oh, a wonderful, wonderful woman. Thank to you. Linda, Thank you to Linda, a Linda, Linda. Woman. And uh, right, Brian. Say that again. To, to Linda, Linda, Linda. Linda, my beautiful, beautiful <laughs> Linda. That's uh, how I always you, address her, Linda, Linda, Linda. Three times. <laughs> yes, that's her name in my book. Was she I, I don't know where that comes from. I think it was some internet thing where the little kid is going, listen, Linda, Linda, yep. Linda, Linda. And so that was about the time I met her, that that was a meme going around. And so I'm sure she hates it, um, she but that's it. what I call but her every time. Anyway. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> every time. Um, well, Brian, um, I wanted to talk with you because I think that you have an interesting love story. The arc of your life has an interesting love story. Um, you and I both had some trouble in our childhoods, um, you know, family strife, that sort of thing. Um, I've been able to work it out with my family. And also, just to go back a little bit where you said you're not a family man, you're my family. I mean, I've always thought of you as family and I can call Brian any time of day of night. He might be ticked off that I'm calling him at 2 a.m., but I know he'll pick up. And he will call me. And, and like, we, we're there for each other. We're each other's, you know, ride or die. And um, it's so nice to have somebody like that in my life. And when Brian and I, you know, have gone through troubles in life, we've actually hiked mountains together. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about a special place for everybody that's in Wilkes County, North Carolina. There's this big rock dome wall um, called Stone Mountain. It's not the big one in Georgia. It's a smaller one, about elevation 2,200 feet. A very creative name. Stone Mountain. And it was about, what, 10 minutes from our elementary school, um, really close by to where we were. And Brian had his, I think it was your first love. Tell me a little bit about Stone Mountain and your first love, and then we'll tie it back to when you and I went on our odyssey there. Oh, my gosh. I know you're trying to get me to cry, but I'm not going to, Jerry Land. But, I'm going uh, to. Write it you, down, Evan. I'm going to make Brian cry. I'm going to draw it. Okay, he's drawing it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But uh, her name was Erin, okay? And Aaron uh, just a, the sweetest little thing in the world. She's the same uh, class, the same grade that uh, Jerry Lynn and I are. We have a picture are. of her. Yep. And I just... I can I can even remember the first time I saw her in uh, in kindergarten in Miss Swain's class, and she was just uh, just just a little a little uh, just a, a little bitty thing, I guess is the best way to say it. 
She uh, was just sweet. She was very smart. And I had my very first kiss at Stone Mountain with her, uh, Jerry Lynn, as you remember. I know you and I have talked about this quite a bit. And uh, she was so smart. She was uh, even worldly. I would even say a little worldly, if you would agree with me Mm -hmm. on that one, Jerry Lynn. She was from New York. Here. She was from like near here and it made her exotic for us Southerners, these New Yorkers. Her brother, (laughs) Julius. I had a massive crush on. So you and I were both affected by the Drellicks, like the Drellicks from New York. Like you had the crush on Aaron. I had the crush on Julius. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and she was just amazing. She was very, very smart. She would talk about my home life and your home life. She had an even more bizarre home yeah. life than the two of us. I don't know how much yeah. you want to go into that, but not too uh, much, but, she, but yes. <laughs> yeah, but she did. She had a, a crazy home life again, mm-hmm. <laughs> made mine and yours look uh, normal compared to some of the stuff yeah. that she went through. And I think but there was I, trauma I bonding there, right, Brian? Like the three of us, Aaron and, and um, Brian and I became really close, the three of us. And I do, I didn't think of it as a child, but there was trauma bonding going on. We, the three of us had some really, um, you know, where we're from is, is a real poor place. Wilkes County, North Carolina is kind of, you know, a, a poor area in many ways. A lot of factories closed down and that sort of thing. And there wasn't a lot of opportunity. And I think that creates stress. Not that there's an excuse for some of this stuff, but I think the three of us were probably, we made probably some of the highest grades in the classes that we were in, the three of us. Like we were very much... Um, in the top of our class academically. Um, but then we had these troubled home lives. And yeah. I don't know if we somehow sensed that about each other, but there was a bond there. And there was a competition, too. Like, I was very much in competition with Brian and Aaron, very much. And I remember one time Aaron and I were talking as adults. Um, she had moved off to Alabama. She actually married a man from here in Rochester, which I thought was really surprising <laughs> that I lived in the place. Yeah. But um I remembered winning a spelling bee in the classroom, but she remembered also winning that spelling bee. We're both remembering <laughs> that we won. <laughs> so our competition with each other, you know, lasted a long time. And then one of the coolest things about um, this is I didn't know that Brian had this love affair with Aaron. And she and I were talking and she, she ended up um, having um, an autoimmune disorder called multiple sclerosis. And she ended up passing away from um, non-small cell lung cancer. I think it was due to the treatment, the medication that treated MS. One of the side effects is um, the non-small cell lung cancer. But before she was um, you know, getting sicker, she had called me up and was having some trouble. And we were talking girl talk. The subject of Brian came up. And she told me her version of, you know, the what they used to call puppy love, but I've always thought like in that movie Love Actually, it's not fair to call it puppy love. It is it is um real love. In your moment when you're in it, it's real love. And she was vacuuming her house and wearing a tiara. And I just said, Aaron, why on the earth are you wearing a tiara while you're doing housework? And she said, Well, if not now, when? And that really got to me. I'm getting chills just now. And so I immediately, when she passed, in her honor, I went and ordered tiaras. And um, I hiked last summer um, or last fall with Maggie, who also went to school with us, Maggie Herb Cowie. And we wore tiaras up on the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, in honor of Erin. So I thought you might like that story about her. She's so creative and But I think there's a thread of sadness that runs through some of your love stories. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind, and how you've, it's remarkable to me how you've been able to keep on keeping on. Um, You know, Brian, do you want to talk about your first wife, Tina, and what it was about her that just floored you and you had to be with this woman? Oh, absolutely. I do. I do want to put a wrap on Erin, though, just to let folks know. She ended up leaving our high school uh, when uh, we were in tenth grade, and I don't know how much, how many details you want to delve into there, Jerry Lynn. But uh, a dear teacher to uh, both of us uh, at North Wilkes High School helped her get out of her abusive situation and her bad situation. And then I always felt this void, you know. Uh, after Aaron left, like I said, when we were sophomores, uh, or were we sophomores or freshmen? I mean, I, I'm getting old, as you know, Jerry, and I can't remember everything. But I think we were yeah. freshmen or sophomores, right? I think so. I think so. Okay. 
It but, was in uh, that like time said, frame. A very dear. Go ahead. Yeah, it was just in that time frame. Yeah, but a very dear teacher. Uh, really uh, was concerned about everything that uh, Aaron yeah. was going through and helped her out of that situation. And I always felt this void, which is crazy. You know, I dated some in high school, and then you know, dated was engaged in uh, a couple of times uh, before I met Tina. But uh, I met Tina in 2006. I was already here in Eastern North Carolina. I was uh, just coming off of breaking off an engagement nine days before the wedding to uh, someone here in Kinston who from a pretty prominent family in Kinston. But I had decided that I just I couldn't follow through with the wedding that uh, I just felt like I was going to be fake myself. I'd never been married to that point. I was 45 years old. And uh, uh, Jerry Lynn, you can uh, uh, analyze me here. I think a lot of it had to do with, uh, you know, just being in love with Aaron and and never finding that person that was as good as Aaron in my mind. I mean, yes, I dated a lot and all that. And like I said, was engaged a couple of times. But then I met Tina uh, and actually met her on a dating app. And just the way she didn't, she wouldn't meet me in person uh until we had got to know each other it was like two or three weeks we talked on the phone got to know each other quite a bit and then i finally met her for the first time like i said in uh it was around 2000 late 2006 uh, early 2007 and i just fell in love with her i mean she was gorgeous she was uh her high school's homecoming queen she was a head wow. cheerleader uh, at uh, White Oak High School her. in Jacksonville, North Carolina, when she was in uh, in high school, and now that tell that everybody your nickname for her, Brian. You even know. Go ahead. Tell everybody your nickname for her. I had several nicknames for her, so I'm the I'm one that you always. One. Well, the, <laughs> the one that you always said was got to go see the hot blonde. The hot she blonde. She was, was the name. hot blonde. <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, I mean, probably five four. I mean, built like a brick. Uh, uh, it just built very well. How about that? Is that a good way yeah, to say that's, it? Yeah, that's good. But there are children <laughs> listening, yes. A brick, <laughs> a brick, a brick house. Right. Just say uh, a brick I house. Just, I fell in love with her heart. I fell in love with uh, she was a everything. Black head. On top of, what was that, dude? <laughs> she was a blackhead. No, no, she no. Was no. A brick. <laughs> she was a brick. No, a brick house. <laughs> brick it's like there's, there's house. a song. She's yeah. a brick yeah. house. What was, right? that, what was that one Norm MacDonald bit? Like she was, uh, she was a real. Um, uh, she was a real uh, axe, a real, axe. <laughs> a real battle axe. Oh no, she was. She was. You know, I never met her in person, but I. He was smitten. I mean, this is a man that just never stopped talking about his wife. I'm like, talk about get to the heart. Oh my gosh, just every conversation I would have with him, Tina, this, Tina, that. He, he was absolutely smitten with her, and you don't see a lot of guys that after they're married they continue to be that vocal and smitten, but this one was. Like Brian uh, was and Tina, it was amazing. Just really I wish sweet. you could have met her, Jerry Lynn. You would have fallen in love with her. And on top of everything, uh, you'll love this. She was also a huge sports fan. She was a Duke fan. Now, we were just talking about <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys. She was a big Dallas Cowboys fan, although uh, before, before she passed, I was able to uh, convert her from that. I was very, very proud of uh, my ability to do that, too. But she was amazing. Uh, we, in fact, we got Molly together. We were t- you were talking about Molly, uh, Molly Ringwald Hughes Hanks the puppy dog. That's her full Christian her name, full name. Uh, the puppy dog over here. <laughs> and uh, well, she tell loved why? Dogs. Tell why she's named Molly Ringwald. Because she's named after America's sweetheart, Molly Ring. That's just common <laughs> sense, Jerry Lynn. Okay, <laughs> I, everybody nah. knows. I mean, even though he's only twenty three, he knows Molly Ringwald is America's sweetheart, right? Again, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know any of the movies 16 candles pretty and no, pink I, 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 no, of course i know who that is <laughs> well brian's in love with molly ringwald and somehow he got to meet her i don't know the story but how did you get to meet molly ringwald you got to molly meet her? uh put out a jazz album okay mm-hmm. and I, like i said i have great connections here in kinston and lenore county we have a school here called lenore community college and uh, they do presentations. They do, uh, you know, musical acts and stuff come through every once in a while. And I've got to give total love here. The uh, PIO for the public information officer, and she has many other titles too, but for Lenore Community College, her name is Richie Honeycutt. She knew how much I love Molly Ringwald. She booked her to come. So when Molly came to Kinston, I was still in charge of the newspaper here in Kinston. I did a big front page story on, you know, on Molly coming. 
Uh, I got to go backstage when she got here. I got to bring her on stage and introduce her. And even at the end of the night, we went to a restaurant. There was a group of us, about eight or 10, that got to go to a restaurant. So I had dinner with Molly Ringwald, too. Well, and I didn't I know that. Say, I, I'll have to send I, you, you the know, pictures of it. It was the awesome. Guy, she was, the guy that was in um, 16 Candles with her was my teenage crush. You remember him? Like, in 16 I, Candles. Oh, yeah. Yes. I don't remember his uh, name, but I know exactly I used to have who you're the talking name, about. He works in like a furniture store his family owns now. I may know a little bit more about him than I should, but I had a real crush on him. Did, did Molly Greenwald have a good album? Molly Greenwald? Greenwald. You, Greenwald whatever the hell, you know what the hell I meant. You know what I meant. You knew what I meant. Everybody else knew what I meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, but when you're talking about He's dissing Molly. Molly. Now, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, did she have a good album? Oh, it was it was it was all right. It was all right. Yeah. Now see now if you tag her on this and I say her out, you know what? Strike that. It was awesome, man. It was one it of was the best awesome albums album. you've ever heard. Okay. I Is mean, it better than Corey uh, Feldman's? Corey Feldman had a <laughs> Yeah, have you You're heard his recent that song? Up. No, no, have you heard his recent song? I didn't know he had a song. Comeback King? No, oh, you're just making no, 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 I swear to God. I don't believe him. Do you believe him? I think I'm being Corey lied Corey has a new had a, had a recent song come out called uh, The Comeback King. Uh, one of the worst things I've ever heard. Uh, <laughs> not a good album. He's going to get album. us banned, Scott. We're going to be banned. To, he tried to do like this, like Michael Jackson. He's like, I'm the comeback. But he, like, he's like doing this terrible Michael Jackson impression. I feel like a lot of 80s stars are like trying to, trying to like get back into the fold oh. and like making these albums. Well, speaking of that, I took my son, Jared, who has autism and loves music, to see Kevin Bacon and the Bacon Brothers down at um, Cuco Lake this summer. They have a... a place down there called point of the bluff vineyards and they do concerts and i saw it come across facebook and of you know the events thing on facebook and it said kevin bacon is coming to a city near you and my 80s heart just went <laughs> and i took him and it was amazing they were really good like they were really good so don't diss the 80s man no, i love the 80s <laughs> sure you do i think i think they're great they're, a, they're a, an outrageous time and <laughs> yeah, you guys had wacky hairdos then. Well, getting back to uh, Tina. So, so Brian was married to Tina for how long? Really, we were together for nine years. We mm -hmm. got married in uh, uh, September of 2014. Uh, but we were together, like I said, she lived in Raleigh. I lived here in Kinston. I know that doesn't mean that much to your viewers, but probably, a, it was a right at a 90 minutes away from each other, about an hour and a half, but we saw each other every weekend. She would spend yeah. every other weekend here in Kinston. I would spend every other weekend up there. We vacationed together. We were, she was my boo. Uh, we got married, uh, in, uh, September of, uh, 2014 and she, we found out she had cancer. Uh, about a month after the wedding. And so uh, she passed away in August of uh, 2015. So technically, we were only married for about 10 and a half months. Yeah. Uh, but we were together. And again, we were, she love of my life. And uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty heart wrenching uh, when she passed yeah. away in uh, September 2015. Yeah. And I remember during that time, you were calling me a lot. I don't know if you remember that. Well, you were and helping me. You were helping me absolutely. psychologically and, with everything. And we decided, you know, that we were going to hike Stone Mountain together. And I thought of it as kind of like this odyssey. And I ended up writing a piece about this called Southern Odyssey. I don't know if you remember that. Um, and we, we went up to the mountain together and I, I sent some pictures, Scott, I don't know if they're able to be shown, but anyway, um, so it's a 2200 foot elevation rock mountain that, um, is about 10 minutes from where Brian and I went to school and we just talked. If you can get up to the top of Tom Stone Mountain if you're going slowly, about what, two hours, maybe less than that. It was less than and that. We, you just, were, we were in much better shape then, too. Oh, yeah. We were rocking it. Uh, there we are. Yeah. So we were uh, just, that's us at the top of the mountain. And, uh, you know, hat tip to the Boston Red Sox. Woo -hoo. Uh, <laughs> but but we, we spoke. That was disgusting. Cut okay. that out. Whatever. <laughs> Scott, cut that out of the podcast. That was, that was outrageous. I think we have said. a couple of pictures from that, from that hiking trip. But I remember at one point, I love that one. That's one of our favorite ones. Um, I remember at one point we were just talking about, you know, the loves of our lives and where things had 
gone wrong and things had gone right. And, and there was this guy that came jogging out of the woods uh, and he was lost, just like the sirens, you know, and all that stuff <laughs> in the Odyssey. And uh, Brian's like trying to be my wingman on the trail, like even in his despair and trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in his life. He was still looking out for me uh, with like, you know, hot guys running out of the forest with their shirts off, which I thought was what? pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. We kept running into this guy. He would just keep running past us over the hour and a half, two hours to the top. He was lost. And so I ended up writing a story about our what Southern kind of Odyssey. What place is the Cal- Carolinas where men are running out of the stone woods? <laughs> in for- without shirts on. I know. It's true. I didn't make this up, did I, Brian? This happened. Not at all. No, she's spot yeah. on. Yeah, it's true. And then and so they then ran out there like Jerry Lynn. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just this guy asked us for directions at the top of a mountain, all hot and sweaty and shirtless. Oh my God. Um, and then when we got up to the top of the mountain, I remember you still looking out for me. So there was some guy there, like trying to, you know, I couldn't tell. I'm so um, uh, unaware of stuff when people are trying to like hit on me. I just wasn't getting it. And Brian's like, Jerry, Jerry, you know, elbowing me. Um, but it was like a really. Um, cathartic thing for us to hike that mountain and talk. And I remember one of the things I thought is that my ex-husband lived um, with me, obviously, and he worked from home. I saw him all the time. Whenever I got home, he was there. Whenever, you know, I, I left the house, he didn't. He worked from home and it was just too much saturation. And one of the things that one of my favorite writers, Khalil Gibran, said, is let there be spaces in your togetherness. And I've always thought about that line. Uh, It said like an ocean moves between you, but you're still together. And maybe some of the success of your, you know, love story with Tina is that you, you live 90 minutes apart. You had, when you saw each other on the weekends, you appreciated it more and you could actually say to her, how was your day? And you wouldn't already know the answer. Now, is there some truth to that? Jerry, you could not have said it any better, and that's absolutely true. That's what we thought was part of our success. And what I, to this day, as you just brought up there, I think was part of our success was uh, we, you know, at the beginning of the week, I would work Monday through Friday, at, you know, for the newspaper, whether it was in the sports department when we first started dating or when I took over the newsroom and had 20 employees working for me. We, uh, I would work my butt off. I would, I mean, I would do 12 hour, 13 hour days. I'd try to get it all in. And, uh, then we would see each other either early Saturday morning until late Sunday night or the first thing, uh, Monday morning. And it just, it was almost like, this is the way we always put it, Jerry. It was, it was almost like it was a vacation, you know, I mean, Uh, we had, you know, real life and have to deal with, you know, the stress of everything that I had. She worked for the post office. She was a lifelong employee of uh, the post office up in Raleigh. And I'm telling you, those weekends were amazing. I mean, mm. I know children listening, I'm going to be super cool here, but I mean, they were awesome. I mean, we, we loved each other and we would just, you know, show each other. And those weekends were amazing. And when we were able to go on cruises and vacations and uh, all that kind of stuff, we just, we really enjoyed each other, I guess is the best way to, to say that. And uh, it, it was amazing. It was just so uh, an amazing. Absence really plum. does make the heart grow fonder. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Yeah. And uh, just again, just very, very blessed to uh, have had that time with her. But uh, your your point is perfect, Jerry. I didn't even know we were going to talk about that, but it's perfect that we, uh, you know, we appreciated the time we had together. In fact, one of her few complaints about me, <laughs> but uh, was that I spent too much time at work. She would uh, say to me, you make time for what's important. And if you're spending all this time at work and you're supposed to be here Friday at 8 o'clock or 8 p.m. and you're not getting here until Saturday morning at 2 a.m., well, you chose work over me. And that would be our only arguments and only disagreements that we would have was the amount of time that I would spend at work and trying to further my career. And again, uh, it's a saying that I've now lived since I lost her back in 2015. So for what, almost nine years now or eight and a half years, you make time for what's important. And it's the lesson that I learned the most after lo- uh, after losing my Tina. Yeah. And I know that you used to go to the ocean a whole lot. What was it about the ocean that you felt close to her there? Well, it was because during her life and during our nine years together, she was one with the ocean. She loved the ocean. She was a beach 
uh, I guess you could say you a got beach married free. on the beach, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, she if she could live on the beach, I'm not talking about in a house on the beach. I'm saying if she could live in a tent yeah. on the beach, she would absolutely have done that. She loved the water so much. And in fact, when uh, when we lost her, that's one of the things she wanted. She loved animals, as we talked about with Molly Girl here and mm -hmm. her dogs. She had had uh, three or four dogs before I met her and even one when we first started dating. Anyway, she had all of them cremated. We had her cremated. And that was one of her instructions to me when she passed was uh, to mix all the ashes together and take oh. them out to the ocean. So a buddy of mine had a uh, boat and we went out into the ocean where we got married. In fact, we were married in uh, September of uh, 2014 on the beach and just about 300, 400 yards off, uh, maybe about a half a mile off the beach where we got married. That's where we spread her ashes. And I, I remember when she died, I wrote a poem. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I titled it Tina's in the Ocean or something like that. Um, yeah. It's just heartbreaking. It's just well, absolutely heartbreaking. It is. And especially when I look now and I look that I'm, you know, as we mentioned earlier, just had my 55th birthday. And, you know, with her passing away, she was a couple of years older that. than me. You as keep she, talking uh, about your age. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But the point that I wanted to make was that she passed not long after her 50th birthday. Oh, and, wow. You know, if there's one thing that I, the message I guess I want to get across here, Jerry, on your show is for people who are listening to this, don't take time for granted. And I know that's a, an, an adage and a cliche, and that's something that people say all the time, but I absolutely 1000% mean it, Jerry Lynn, is that mm. uh, you just never know. We had all these plans. She was only a couple of years away from retiring. And we were going to do all these trips and we were going to, mm. you know, go to, she had never been to California. We were going to go to California and spend some time there and go see the Pacific ocean together and all that kind of stuff. And then cancer raised its ugly head and took her away from me. And, uh, don't put stuff off. I guess if there's a message I want to leave in regards to Tina here on your yeah. show is don't put things off, do it now. You know, you yeah. may not think, Oh, you know, maybe I don't have enough money to do it. No, you know what? You will find the money to do it. Because, yeah. as Tina always said, you make time for what's important. I agree with that. And one of the things that someone said to me recently is that they have to, like, people have to earn their place in your heart. And I asked them, well, how do you do that? And you know what? They, they said time and commitment. And I think that's what Tina was saying to you. Like, the time that you spend with me is showing me that I'm your priority right now. You know, and... A lot of people, after having that traumatic a loss, you know, like the movie Love Story, you know, with um, Ryan O'Neill, who just recently died, and um, I'm going to forget the actress's name, Allie something. The stories where the woman dies so early in their, Allie McGraw, the stories that the wife dies so early, a lot of people don't recover from that. Like the other movie, Nicholas Sparks, you know, he had... They just don't get married again. So Brian recently got remarried and surprised us all. Like, I'm one of his closest friends, and I'm finding out on Facebook. I'm like, <laughs> dude, what the heck? But tell us a little bit, because when I saw it, I met Linda, 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 his uh, his new wife, and I adore her. Um, I really think Tina would have approved based on everything you've said. Um but, you know, there's a song that I sometimes play at night when I'm in bed because I have been divorced. It'll be 12 years coming up. So I've been alone, you know, quite some time. Well, I haven't been divorced 12 years, but I've been separated and my divorce happened a couple years later. There's a song by the Eagles called Try and Love Again. And I'll just be thinking about things and assessing my life. And it's, you know, I'm an empty nester now and I'm having a lot of fun. But at night when it's quiet, you kind of reassess where you are. And you think about the ghost of relationships past. And so this song, Try and Love Again, by the Eagles, I'll play. And it just gets me into this reassessing thing. And I thought about that song with you because you did. You did it. You tried. And now you're loving again. And you, you took the ultimate step. You're like, you're freaking married again. Like, tell us a little bit. <laughs> tell us a little bit about how you how you got there. Linda is just such an amazing soul. Uh, let me begin by saying that I had dated a, a couple of people after a period of time after I lost Tina. And uh, and I don't want to say I don't want to denigrate anyone, but they the people that I was with had 
I wouldn't say had issues, but they weren't very comfortable with me still trying to honor Tina and just the way yeah. that I loved her. And she was, you know, I was planning on being married to Tina for the rest of my life until uh, both of us were gone. But uh, I met Linda through a mutual friend and uh, just was just blown away immediately by just her heart. And and I, I've never, and Jerry Lynn, you can back me up on this. I don't know if I've ever met someone who has the kind of heart that Linda has. I mean, she loves everyone. You never Very hear sweet. her say anything negative about anyone else. She is, uh, she's a great mom. She's got uh, uh, three boys who I actually knew all three of her boys before here the, who live here in Kinston oh. before I ever got to know her. So oh, wow. I, I did, like I said, I got to know her and, and it was slow. It wasn't, it wasn't kind of like it was with Tina where it was just, Oh my God, I fell in love with Tina and I was just head over heels the entire time. As much as I love Linda now and I do, it really wasn't that, you know, just jump in with both feet and mm -hmm. fall in love with her. It, it was a gradual thing. We got to know each other very well. Again, she's got just such a pure heart and she loves me. She treats me like a king. You've seen that personally, yes. Jerry, just how good yes. she is to me. There's some and pictures of Linda really, and me hmm? and Brian at the, we're cheering each other. I don't know if Scott has those, but her spirit is definitely joyful. Like one of the things I noticed when I met her, we went to the down home, or the down east wood ducks. Um, <laughs> Is she's game for anything Brian comes up with. Like Brian yeah. can be, you know, like jovial and silly and cheerful. And she just compliments him so well. And, you know, what you said about how it wasn't this like head over heels thing at first. One, you're coming from a place of trauma. You've had the loss. Of, there we are. You've had a loss <laughs> of um, your first wife. And so you're cautious, I think. You don't want to get hurt again. You don't want to lose somebody again. And then the other thing is, is that it's a mature love now. Not that your love with Tina wasn't mature, but you've you've been through it before and you wanted to build that trust back up. And I sometimes think second time around in adulthood, the relationships, they'd go slower, but there's an analogy to building a house you're building that foundation really, really reinforced, really, re, you know, strong. And so it can stand all the things that we now know can come at us. Do you think there's something like that? Like you were just at a storm response yesterday. You know what storms can do. Losing Tina was a storm in your heart. So the analogy there could be you want to build that fortified foundation. Well, oh. Linda. I couldn't say it any better than you just did right there, Jerry Lynn. Uh, Linda uh, saw where how shattered I was, and she didn't just immediately, you know, throw herself at me and love me. I'm the only person you know. Yeah. She has been so gentle with everything. I mean, I've got pictures of Tina still around here, and yeah. she respected that. And there is uh, something to be said for uh, someone who takes it slow and wants a real relationship instead of just trying to jump into something. And that's the way Linda did. She, uh, she's allowed me to heal and not that you ever heal from something like this. And I mean, I'm a, actually a, a member of a widower's group too. And I mean, I, I know that I, I realize psychologically that I'm always going to be uh, uh, healing from this, but Linda has just been amazing in allowing me to heal and helping me heal and encouraging me to talk, talk things out when I need to. And I'm telling you, I, uh, didn't, uh, there, she's such an, an incredible woman, an incredible person to, uh, to be that way. I'm very she's lucky. Secure. I'm very blessed to have her. We've actually yeah. been dating for about, I guess for about six years and it just hit me this past summer. And I'm sorry that I didn't uh, let you know, Jerry, but we kind of kept it on the low too, yeah, but uh, that, kidding. you know what, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm still healing. It's always going to be a process, but Linda is the woman that I want to spend the rest of my life with because of her heart and because of how much I love her and how much she loves me. And that's why we decided to uh, make the decision. We're not getting any younger, Jerry Lynn. So I know, uh, I, I, I know. This, There's that, no Benjamin I, Button here, right? <laughs> kudos to you for not making like a big announcement or a big ordeal. That's yeah. kind of an honorable thing you did there. Yeah. 
Like, I think. I don't know. I know. I think I find it's wedding sweet. announcements to be. Uh, actually, no, I shouldn't say that because I'm going to be going to a wedding in a year. <laughs> Shout well, out to Jen and Charlie. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think one of the things that was really cool about Linda from my perspective, and I'm obviously wary about anybody that's dating my friends. I want to be sure that they're cool people. I go down there pretty much like I'm a spontaneous person. And Brian knows this about me. Love it or hate it. He knows this about me. And I. Brian's like telling Linda, who they were living together at this point, hey, I've got this single woman from my childhood coming to spend the weekend with us. Are you okay with that? And Linda was okay with that. Like, she didn't give me the catty vibe, you know, that you can get. There was no, there's a picture of us where Brian and I are like, like standing there and uh, at the table, you know, together, like really close to each other. And some women would be really threatened by that. Linda really embraced me. I didn't get any of that uh, catty vibe whatsoever, you know. So I think it goes to show her confidence and her trust is. And I don't mean to interrupt you there, but trust yeah. is such a valuable thing here. And we have that trust with each other. I trust her mm -hmm. implicitly. I mean, I know yeah. uh, that she loves me, and she, you know, she's a beautiful woman. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm is. sure she. You know, you know there how you <laughs> women are. I mean, you get hit on all the time, and. Uh, I know she does, and I'm comfortable with that because I know she loves me. I have female friends. You were, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, you obviously, but then our mutual friend too, uh, Kelly Lynn, who oh, yeah, uh, Kelly Lynn. graduated from my high school with. In fact, yeah. uh, she was here uh, this past weekend for my Hall of Fame ceremony. And, oh, that's sweet. Uh, and and it's just that's what I'm saying. It's so refreshing in 2024 to be with someone th who is confident in herself. She knows she's got the goods, Jerry Lynn. She knows yeah, she's, she's, she's a beautiful that, woman that I love yeah. her. So yeah. she, uh, it, it's an awesome situation that she trusts me. I trust her and we can have this kind of relationship, especially in the chapter of our lives that we're both in. Well, do you know what I think? And I will close on this because I know we're running out of time here. The work that you have done to get past losing Aaron, this beautiful, beautiful woman, and then to turn around and, you know, get past losing Tina, you you let Linda know where she stands in your heart. And I think one of the things that builds confidence in people when they're in a relationship is you don't leave ambiguity into what they mean to you. And I think where jealousy comes in, where cattiness comes in is the person is not sure. Not always, but a lot of people, they just need to know where I stand with you and I can see you doing the work of letting Linda know where she is in your life. And that to me is real love. Yeah. I, again, all I can do is uh, echo what you're saying there, Jerry Lynn, you're 100% correct. Uh, there again, I'll say it again. There's something to be said for being with someone who's confident and secure enough in themselves yeah. to have a beautiful woman like you, Jerry Lynn, come and stay in my home for a week or however long it was. Yeah. And, and, and she didn't have one issue with it because Not I told her, you know, listen, I love Jerry and I do. And I love you, Jerry. And you I know this, you but we've never in our entire relationship no. had no. this anything. No. I mean, where you're I would, a, you're my brother. Fact, I, I Basically, that's what we sister. say. I truly exactly. feel it. To even think about, ooh, even Ew. whole oh, hands of you will no, be gross. No. I know, Please. I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, and I no. and again, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed to have a, a wife now for a little over yeah. two weeks. I know. Who, well, uh, who trusts me that way? I don't appreciate well, her. I am. I am really glad that you found love again, and I think it was a perfect fit for this podcast. So thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are, and you've got a storm and some other things to deal with down there in North Carolina. So I'll let you go. But thank you so much for joining us, Brian. And I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. And thank you all for listening to Sparks of Love. <laughs>